Hi folks, the Filipina P here and we're back with our vivacious attorney, Attorney Grace Lynn. Welcome back to my show. Oh, thank you so much for having me here again and thank you for such description. Vibacious, just like you, of course. Oh, thank you. You are always radiant, Attorney oh. Grace Lynn. We have to talk about that secret, that secret to youthfulness. <laughs> <Colorful> thing. Yes. <laughs> well, for today's episode, we'll be talking about numerous interesting topics. Mm -hmm. So let's start with blacklisting mm -hmm. because there's an incident that happened recently at the airport. And there's this foreigner who was acting rudely towards an immigration officer. I know there are certain ways that... Um, you know, things that they cannot say, things that they cannot do, because obviously they're not a citizen here in the mm -hmm. Philippines. So what are the things that you should avoid to be blacklisted as a foreigner? Okay, first of all, your entry in the country as a foreigner is a mere privilege, right. which can always be taken away from you or you can always be deported or blacklisted if you don't show the proper attitude especially when first of all when you enter the country when you face the immigration officer if you show some rudeness or some improper decorum like improper attitude or personality that the immigration officer at his discretion sees that you're not going to be good in this country because the way you act you're just going to cause trouble then automatically the immigration officer can blacklist you and can um, uh, can um, ban you from entering the country. Right, so it's discretionary, right? Yeah, at the immigration officer's level at the airport, that's discretionary. But there are other acts or there are other grounds that can cause you to be blacklisted in the country. Oh, okay, like? Yeah. What are um, those? Under the Philippine Immigration Act, among other acts that can cause you to be blacklisted is first, where, where if you are an idiot or insane person, <laughs> aren't or we all persons <laughs> who have been declared insane? Okay. Second, if you are afflicted with a loathsome or dangerous contagious disease. Oh, okay. Yeah. Or another would be if you have been convicted of a crime in, involving moral turpitude. Let's say. Um, I know for a fact that the immigration office all over the world has a list of those who have been convicted of crimes involving sex offenders. Okay, well, I hope there are always, you know, updating that list because, yeah, yeah because I know that there are some that probably. get in. True. So yeah. probably they've been using the back door. You know, the back door. The, <laughs> okay, the there back is door. The back door in the Philippines. Okay. Or some may be using a fake identification. If they're already here in the country, if they cause trouble, obviously it's still if someone reports them, if they're being unruly, can it also constitute as well, if they're already in the country and they're yeah. just being unruly towards other Filipinos and there's no crime committed or the Filipinos has not um, filed a case that would cons that that his act would constitute a criminal offense and there's no conviction that cannot just be a ground for him to be deported. There are numerous foreign vloggers mm -hmm. here and I'm not really sure about this certain channel mm -hmm. but I heard that uh, this foreigner was talking about you know inflammatory statements things, towards, statements yeah. towards our government mm -hmm towards our people and somehow his channel was shut down okay and um, can he also be blacklisted if someone reports him if what if he's just telling the truth and you know from his own perspective i'm not saying that he's lying there are obviously you have to take it with a grain of salt but again he's a foreign guest in our country so basically just like if she he's just invoking his freedom of speech you're referring to his freedom of speech of yeah. sta stating what's truth that he's experiencing within the country so for foreigners their freedom of speech is can also be subject to certain regulations and one of which is that you cannot just say something that will prejudice the government you cannot Ooh. just say something that will will blacken the reputation of the country with other with with with, with the world like, probably, I don't know that specific blogger. I've not seen any YouTube blog that you may, might be referring to. But if you say something that will ruin the reputation of the Philippines, definitely you're going to be flagged down by the country, by the Philippines itself. Um, oh. It might not be automatically a violation wherein nobody is going to be charging you for, for, for 
a case in with the immigration or a case in court, but reprimanding you to to to, to shut down the yeah that may be the first step, and if you continue to do so, then the next step may be you know to subject you to certain proceedings where you can be deported and you can be blacklisted from entering the country. Oh, okay. Well, for us Filipinos, I you know I have videos. You've seen my videos of you know criticizing. Not specifically trying to, you know, raise havoc. Just pointing out the things that we could improve to be better people, to be a better nation. So well, I'm a Filipino citizen, and I'm just exercising my right to, you know, to freedom of speech and trying to point out the problem. It's not trying to, oh, this sucks. This, 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 and that. Well, even if you're Filipino, even if you do those things, the things probably that discriminates the Filipino or the culture or everything that we have here, you're a Filipino. You're diff you have different level of rights or different level of how you you can exercise your freedom of speech okay you can discriminate our country for let's say discriminate the government for not paving the roads <laughs> for not providing this and that so you can do that one okay but for foreigners unfortunately you cannot do that one because your stay here is just a privilege you're not a citizen who's who can be entitled to raise your voice because you, you because of something that the government has not provided you Okay, so what about if someone, not specifically a vlogger, any any foreign foreign national mm -hmm. would just, ah, oh, I hate Dumaguete because it's there's always um, power interruptions and that kind of stuff. Can he be blacklisted just because you know simply stating you know stating it's, his frustrations? I don't think if that kind of if only that kind of statement is being said can cause you to be blacklisted or something that is violation of of their stay here because he is simply just stating his frustrations you're allowed to voice out your frustrations okay but if you are trying to voice out your frustration in a way that you targeted um the politicians or the government itself oh, then that's a different thing if they're specific yeah, there's kind of, let's say for instance you've said that i i don't like dumaguete because it's like it's always run out and something like that but if 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 the statement goes this way like this brownout has not been solved by the, 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 by gov the government of Dumaguete. Uh, I don't like it. They, they, they don't address something to that kind of effect that, can, that may cause them into trouble. So it's, it, it depends on how the statement is being, being said. And who heard. <laughs> and who exactly. heard him. <laughs> and the audience who, who, who've heard it. Yeah. yeah. Well, you can always count on me, guys, that I'm always going to tell it like it is. And I'm not trying to sugar sugarcoat anything. Because for us to solve the problems and for us to better ourselves, at least we have to acknowledge that there is a problem. Mm -hmm. So what about this scenario? What if a foreign vlogger attacks a certain individual, a Filipino citizen, uh, say... Uh, he's calling this person, oh, she's a liar, she's a scammer. Can that, can he be in trouble? Okay, his statement might constitute cyber libel. Okay. So if um, one of the elements of cyber libel, if the attack is specific or the statement is specific to a person that's identifiable. If the blogger says, um, Filipina P is a scammer. Oh. And there's only one Filipina P. Yeah. You're the only Filipina P and right. the attack is directed to you and these statements are kind of defamatory when it says you're a scammer, you're a prostitute, something that tarnishes your reputation, then that can constitute cyber libel. But if let's say the, 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 the statement is not that defamatory, like it's just you're lying, you're saying this, it's not true. So that that can be an, an unjust vexation. Oh, you can still yeah. you can, you still, can still file a case against th that person. I'm pretty easygoing. I'm very I'm difficult to offend, but there are certain things that really you know below the belt. So well, Filipinas are known for their patience. We do lots of patience. Oh gosh, believe but me, we always have limitations up to where we can tolerate. Yeah, it, it'll it'll you know it'll break. You can stretch it. Yeah, it's definitely gonna break if it goes to a point that. It's intolerable. So, Gracie, if a foreign national is convicted of cyber libel or cyber bullying, mm -hmm. will it result in him being blacklisted here in the Philippines? Well, if he has served his sentence in the Philippines and somebody files for deportation case against him on that basis, yes. Because unfortunately, cyber libel is a crime that involves moral turpitude. Okay, so if I'm a foreigner and I get blacklisted, 
can I file a petition to be unblacklisted so that I can enter the Philippines? Yeah, you can do that one, but oh. I would suggest you um, you secure the services of a lawyer in doing that one because it has to be a petition before the commission, commissioner, I mean, and then it's a process. So there's no assurance or it's it all depends on the discretion of the commissioner whether that blacklisting can be lifted in your favor. To wrap this up and then if you want to have a peaceful, happy life in the Philippines and if you're a foreign national, don't attack the government Correct. or its people, specific Filipino citizens or you know the culture. Just, just be a law-abiding citizen and then you'll be fine. True. Correct. Okay. Gotcha. So what about this next topic? Our country is very religious it's a catholic country and the way we see things here when it comes to modesty and the way our laws are formulated it's almost biblical uh, talking morali- about yeah the morality. morality is also a different level compared to the ones in the west countries yes. western countries so only fans in the west is like it's almost like a normal thing for them are we are we allowed to be in only fans i mean filipino citizens <laughs> can they be an of Model, Ooh. OF models, models. OF models. I like that sound. Yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, we have what uh, we have this anti-photo and video voyeurism act of two thousand nine, which prohibits the recording, reproduction, and distribution of intimate photos um, without consent or circulating it in the internet. So, among the acts, among the acts penalized under the these um, law is to copy or reproduce or to cause to be copied or reproduce photos or video of recording of sexual act or any similar activity without or with consideration. Ah, okay. okay so, if you're in OnlyFans, you're doing these things. You're yeah. sending photos and it's always for consideration, right? And these right. photos are kind of sexual in, in, in nature. nature. Mm-hmm. Okay. And second, a second would be to sell or distribute or cause to be sold or distributed such photo or video recording of sexual act, whether it be it an original copy or a reproduction thereof. So oh. if somebody sends you a, a sexual video um, and you have it recopied and somebody else distribute that one as a recopied videos, and that's a violation of this law. Third, to publish or broadcast or cause to be published or broadcast, whether in print, or in broadcast media or show or exhibit the photo or video coverage or recording of such sexual act or any similar activity through VCD, DVDs, those sex scandals. <laughs> sex scandals. <laughs> so, what is internet, this? in yeah. cellular phones or other similar means or device, it's definitely a violation of our laws here. What about those Filipinos in OnlyFans? Because I heard, someone told me, not that I know of because I don't have any there's no way for me to find out. I don't have an account to see yeah, that If there thing. are Filipinos in OnlyFans, um, it I'm, may be that they've not been caught yet by, the, <gasps> by authorities. Because if somebody gets to report them, they're gonna, <laughs> definitely going to be penalized under this law. Okay. Or second, they might not be in the Philippines. Because we can only penalize acts that are happening within the jurisdiction of our, our courts. And okay. that is within the Philippines. Ah. So, if acts are done outside the country, we cannot penalize those acts. Even if it's viewed in the country. I mean, it's viewed by people in the countries. Right. I know this is not really like um, one of the things that women do here. I mean, they do, you know, the cyber sex and stuff. But OnlyFans has been very popular, especially in the, in in the, the States. In, in the, the US, US yeah. yeah. It's always like, it's almost like, oh, everybody's got an OnlyFans, like, Okay, it just it was brought to my attention by one of my viewers. Like, do you guys, do you guys do OnlyFans? There, it's like, what is even o- an OnlyFans? I only knew that when it was it was brought up. But I, I've seen those things on on TikTok or on yeah social media. But actually, I never really thought I, I didn't know what that actually. Is. I read an article. Yeah. Um, an article in, in Canada where an, an athlete from a certain province was eliminated from the list of athletes because it was found out that she was in OnlyFans. And the defense of the athlete is just because she needs to generate money in order to support um, her sport. 
but oh. it, it was not taken into consideration by you know the, the the sport committee so he was eliminated from the team but again he was not she was not prosecuted because there's no such crime committed if you go into only fine and that's in canada right so yeah I, they have different they, laws they have different laws okay. so people have been using this as a means of lively livelihood uh-huh yeah so what about this scenario gracie what if a filipina just goes to a different country let's say thailand mm-hmm. or somewhere outside the philippines jurisdiction and did the acts whatever that is <laughs> And came home to the Philippines and still getting paid by OnlyFans, but the act was made outside the country. Okay, if all the acts has been completed outside the jurisdiction of our country, and the only thing that's been that's that's occurring is the receipt of the royalties, <laughs> the receipt of the royalties <laughs> from those videos or photos that he she already posted and distributed while she was out of the country, I don't think there's a violation of our laws here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So you're safe. You can go to Thailand and then do do the acts there. Unless you get penalized by Thailand. Be oh, yeah. careful because I don't... I'm yeah, so we don't know the, the, the laws in laws Thailand. In Thailand. Okay. You can go to the States, do your thing, and then have a vacation in our country, and then don't do the thing. <laughs> don't do the thing. Outside OnlyFans, what about a Filipina with a foreign boyfriend or a foreign husband? What if she takes you know, photos of herself or videos of herself and send it to her spouse, her boyfriend, you know, because they're in an LDR. Is she violating our laws? If there is consent in sending those photos and if um, if there is no consideration when she sends those photos, it's just because they are an intimate relationship and okay. that's just how they do their kinks. <laughs> their kinks. <laughs> then basically, I don't see any violation here. Although in, 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 in the Anti-Photo and Video Voyeurism Act of 2009, the, the first act considered as violation is when you take photos and video coverage of any person, a group of persons performing sexual acts or any similar activity or to capture an image of private areas of a person, like whatever um, sexual parts of the person or undergarments without the consent is what is considered as violation. But if there is consent, which is definitely when you're taking taking a picture of yourself and you're sending it yourself to your to your intimate partner, then no, no, there's no. But you said no consideration. But what about if they're not married? It's just a boyfriend and a girlfriend, but he's supporting <laughs> her, not paying her for the photos but supporting her well i don't see it as a consideration for for her sending or doing that act of sending the photos okay it's not consideration paid to have that photo sent to him it's a consideration it's a it's a <laughs> it's a gift to the filipina for whatever sustenance that he has to he has to uh, he has to be uh, fulfilled like or whatever expenses what, she had. Yeah, whatever but it's not, the, it's not for a consideration for that certain photo that's been sent to him. Okay, so they'll be safe in that, you know, in that department. Yeah, and as long as it's kept private between themselves. Kept private. <laughs> okay, yeah, don't different. advertise it. Of course, it's different <laughs> if you once if you post it in public places and then you're trying to you know, generate money money for that one. Okay, then that's a different story. That's a different story. Let's say relationship broke up and at that time, the Filipina has recant his consent for you oh. distributing those photos or using those photos. That's a different thing. Okay. It's now, it can now be considered as without consent. And the partner has to respect that one. Otherwise, any distribution, any, any, anything that he does on the, on, on the photos, yeah. it's going to be a violation of, of our, our loss here. Okay. Mm-hmm. All right. So the bottom line is that I can give away the photos of my recent wardrobe malfunction, but I can't charge for it. And no OnlyFans. Darn it. <laughs> Darn. Okay. Anyway, my next question is, I've got some of my subscribers mm-hmm. who are in a relationship with a Filipina in a long distance relationship. And they said, uh, I just don't feel right uh, about this girl that she's not really being truthful. Mm-hmm. Is it legal to hire a private investigator? Well, private investigation or private detectives is not quite common in the Philippines. Right. But there is a law that um, governs agencies or a private security agency 
operation or activities, among others, which includes private detectives. So basically, if you hire somebody who wants to go on a private detective thing, it has make sure that you're hiring someone with license. Ah, license. They have the to be. The agency has to be licensed to do a private detective thing, because otherwise, if you uh, hire somebody who is not licensed, there's, there's gonna be some or they're gonna be in violation of our privacy of the person or even violation of RE9262. But even if you hire a private investigator who is licensed to do such act, um, the way it has to be done must be in accordance with our laws. There has to there needs to be no encroachment or violation of, of our laws here. Let's say he can, a person who's doing a private investigation cannot trespass the, pri the, the property. Or harass the person. Or harass the person. Right. Or make the person he is, he is following as if he was stalking that girl. Oh, to, no to, stalking. No, okay. Yeah, you can do the stalking thing, but make sure that the girl is not aware he's being stalked or is not feeling harassed or... In, in she no doesn't way, know. In no way that she can be aware of what you're doing. Oh, Because otherwise... Okay. You can ob observe that that's from gonna afar. Be, yeah, that's going to be a violation. It is legal here. It's just that it's not very common. It's not common. Then you cannot just hire anybody. Mm -hmm. It has to be True. a licensed detective. I don't think there are private investigators in Visayas or in Mindanao. I know there is one in in Manila because I've I've been asked this question like many times but I don't feel I don't feel confident to give recommendations because obviously I don't know if they're if it's a legitimate company and I don't I don't know their track records you know so it's the same thing with me a number of clients also have contacted me because they wanted their girlfriend or their fiance to be privately investigated or to <laughs> what to know things about their fiance and to make sure that make they sure, are yeah, and, and, truthful. And, and, yeah, the same thing as you feel towards providing referrals, same thing goes with me too. Like, because I don't know whether or not the, the, the agency has license or what their reputation is, and I don't want to be implicated by anything that they do. There are plenty of private investigators in the U.S., and it's very common there. It's like a profession there. It is a profession. <laughs> there are bounty hunters, like, you know, chasing criminals and such. But uh, here, it's not really a big thing plus we have lots of mara tests here so lots of <laughs> private investigators they're not even they're you're not even commissioning their you know their services but they're going to give you the information well thank you so very much for your time and explaining this complicated law for my viewers and as always guys you know me i'll be back in three more days with something unusual that you don't want to miss that's it for today bye 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 Give me a P, give me an E, give me an A. What do you got? What you got is the best source of information about life in the Philippines. I can give you the inside scoop about everything you need to know, then cheer you on as you start your overseas adventure. All I ask in return is that you subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, and consider becoming a patron to receive extra content and exclusive videos. And while you're waiting for the game to resume, why not check out the halftime show? I wish I had bigger pom-poms.